Please welcome Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Amor Motley. Good afternoon. This is a story that we've seen play out on the world stage time and time again. Poor countries paying for the price of wealthier nations. My friends, we're seeing this now in Pakistan, where the flooding is so extreme that it has pushed one third of the country underwater. It is apocalyptic. Pakistan has a very, very small carbon footprint, and yet is suffering from some of the most devastating effects of this climate crisis. And yes, this is only one example among many. Right here in the Americas, Puerto Rico has been crippled by flash flooding just this week. Guadalupe, Turks and Caicos Islands, and Bermuda all have been victims of Hurricane Fiona. My friends, this is proof that the climate crisis is real, and it is, yes, man-made. We have to convince world leaders to take action to help the countries that need it most. Prime Minister Andrew Honus wants world leaders to work with the same urgency to combat climate change as they did with the COVID-19 pandemic. He made the call while addressing the World Leaders Summit at the start of the Global Climate Conference in Glasgow, Scotland on Monday. The Prime Minister says the quality of a climate finance must urgently be improved if the world, especially small island developing states, SIDS, must survive the effects of climate change. This means boosting grant funding from its current levels and allocating at least half of concessional climate finance to support adaptation and resilience objectives. We have neither the technology nor the resources to adapt to the extent required. And moreover, there are limits to adaptation. This now takes us into the realm of loss and damage. Greetings and welcome to Caribbean Vanguard. For those of you who are returning to our channel, welcome once again. I know it cannot just be me who realized something about this. We have multiple key figures across the Caribbean asking for actions to be taken to address climate change. And here's my thing about it. It seems to me that things like this are not really an issue until certain people make it an issue. I don't know if it's politics or not, but what would happen if those people did not exist? Like right now, if they wasn't here, what if they disappear? Is it time for us to start leaning on each other and figure this thing out? Or is it that they are too deeply involved with our affairs that we cannot move forward and do what we need to do? And that is why I keep reaching out to the common people. I'm not saying that leadership shouldn't press them about their involvement with the climatic changes. What I'm saying is that the common people have to take note of this and realize that your leaders are looking to them as if they are God, waiting for answers from them. But while they do that, how about we pull together and figure this thing out? And once we do it ourselves, then we can do everything ourselves. But if we keep looking for other people to resolve our issues, then we will continue to find ourselves in a messy situation. It is crucial that we start figuring a lot of this stuff out ourselves. It's crucial that we start leading it, at least, or become vanguards of our own problems. We could get some help here and there, but we have to look within, first of all. We have the talent, we have the numbers, we need to start connecting with our brothers and sisters across the globe. We need to start doing better when it comes to dealing with Africa. Why is it we have such close connection with Europe and the US, but now with Africa? And the same message goes to Africa as well. I know there are lots of talk about it, but for years, all I've been hearing is talk. There are some people out there who can talk very well, but it is time for us to take actions. 
it is time for us to set goals and it's time for us to move to them. Common people, just a couple of us need to get this thing going. Impact your circle as much as you can. And this have to do with, of course, values or morals as well. Because they are of us, that don't mean that they are for us, right? So we got to make sure we separate ourselves from those ignorant ones. And the ones who've been causing havoc in our communities. And get the people who truly care about the youths, the people who truly care about the next generation, to move this thing forward. Because the outsiders can never care about you as much as you can care about yourself. Why would they have an issue with taking over your territory? Have you seen what is happening right now in the Caribbean, in Africa, and other parts of the world? Once you let certain personalities in, it's a wrap. It's like cancer. It takes over the body. It's an invasive species, that type of mentality that I'm talking about. And it's been like that for generations. You're not going to change it. Because you may have one person here who is good. But then that person becomes a window for others who are not so good. Because you were able to play with a poisonous snake and get away. It doesn't mean that your youths and everybody else are going to get away with it. So we have to be careful with the message that we send the youths. Telling them that it's okay to kiss a venomous snake. That it is okay to lie down with a venomous snake. That it is okay to put all your trust in a venomous snake. Simply because you happen to get by. And the person before you happen to get by. Well, so you think. If you are sick, you don't tell somebody else to take the medicine for you and you'll be healed. <laughs>